Hey there, Shauna Karish here with another Ask Shauna Answer. Okay, this one says, this one's from Kelly. It says, hi, Shauna, I found on target training when I rescued a mare who's very aggressive and has made me question all my training techniques. Her biggest problem is her feet. Anytime anyone goes to touch any hoof and ask her to pick it up, she will kick forward, backward to the side. She is quite flexible. I have also been working um, with all four of my horses on the basics of clicker training. I've ordered and used all your gear book DVD. So far, so good, but she is due for a trim and we are moving on to the next lesson of taking a step. My question is, how and when do I start working with her feet? At this point, I never walk behind her or even groom past her shoulder, and I always have a halter on her when I'm working with her. Thanks, Kelly. Okay, Kelly, there's, um, there's, okay, so there's two pieces to this one. Um, one, I think it's great that you're working with, with her. I mean, I really have found that aggression comes from fear, and so, I'll change that. that uh, aggression comes from fear. And, and really by using positive reinforcement, it does a lot to change those emotions and to, to reduce the fear and to help them feel safe. Now she is aggressive, which like I said, is from fear. And, but you've gone, a lot of times I tell people to start with horses that are questionable in protected contact, but you've made it kind of past that point, it seems like. And it sounds like you've worked out the, uh, her it sounds like she's good with her feet I mean not good with her feet she is good with taking the food and it, it sounds like you're doing good with that part but the feet is her biggest problem so the feet what I do what I recommend doing and I do it whether it's an aggressive horse or it's a like a horse that kicks or it's a horse that just doesn't know any better or even like a zebra you know I've worked with and the I simply ask I will ask them for their foot. So don't touch her foot, but ask her to to lift her own feet. So I would start, and I'm assuming that tactile all over and touching her all over is good. It sounds like not in the back end. I'm going to address that part because I really think you should iron that part out first. But once you're good with that, what I would do is, so then she should be more relaxed. And remember, you want to keep looking for relaxation in these situations. Because it makes her tense and uneasy, she gets defensive and ready to kind of take care of herself at, at any cost. So what I would recommend doing is have the, uh, I would start by touching like up at her arm or just pointing and saying, have your foot, can I have your foot. Until you get to a point where she even, I don't even want them to lift it yet. If I just see the weight rock off of that foot ever so slightly. So now they're freeing it up to lift it. I take that. So I bridge and reinforce that. I click them for that behavior. Then the next thing, and I do that a few times so I can tell they're kind of anticipating. The next thing I'm going to look for is that knee to bend ever so slightly. So I just want to see it go, boop. And then I go, good, that's all I want. I want to think you to think about picking up that foot until eventually you build from there until she is picking up the foot. But don't hold the foot. Ask her to do it. And she may just lift it tiny bit off the ground. That's okay. When she feels like she's in control of it, you're going to have a lot more confidence come from her because it won't be so... Uh, she won't feel like she's going to be out of control. It's her foot. She's just not going to kick you when she has control of that foot. She's going to kick when she feels like she is going to be threatened or worried. So in this situation, you're saying, I'm not doing anything. You're doing it. And get her so she gets the idea and actually likes to pick up her foot. So I use classic conditioning a lot here. I depend on it. I depend on it a lot everywhere. But in this situation, what I want to see her do is I want her to love this behavior. I want her to think it is the best thing. And so pretty soon she'll be lifting that foot up, lifting that foot up. And then I would move to the back feet. Now going to the back feet, I wouldn't, um, if what I would get is perhaps a pool noodle or perhaps because they're very soft and they don't look like a whip, because if she's had exposure to a whip, or even like a carrot stick, which is a whip, or a flag on a stick, any of those things can be quite fearful and generate more defensiveness and more protectiveness, more vulnerability. So what I would do is, if she's okay with a dressage whip and doesn't know them and it doesn't bother her at all, a dressage whip is a really nice tool, only because it's, it is truly an extension of your hand here, and that little 
the little it's the little lash on the end really but for the our intents and purposes to just use it and kind of touch her foot it gives you a way to reach back there and touch her foot with with precision but without um if she kicks or bang it, she's not going to get hurt if she hits it and it's not going to startle her if she hits it but it gives you a little bit of reach and it lets you be very precise and very light because we want this to be a light thing so just like the front i would start by tapping just a little bit above her hock and say leg and ask for her leg and look for the same thing for her to rest to shift that weight to the other foot and then eventually to lift it slightly until you get more and more and more so i would i would definitely let her do that when she's good at that the next thing I would do is, when she's good at all of them, I, I find that typically, not always, because they're all individuals and have their own history, but typically the front feet are easier to do than the back. So they're usually more comfortable with that than the back. So I would start there and get her getting the idea and liking it and realizing that she's safe. And then go to the back. When she will lift all four and she'll hold them up for a little bit, she's like, I love this. This is great. No problem here. And do it at different places so she gets used to you know, doing it here, doing it there, and shows you she's truly comfortable with it. Because sometimes we can get stuck in one context. And then they're like, this is where I do it is in this context, not that context. So then getting them to go, uh, then, but when they can do it everywhere, anytime, easily, then we have a better context to, to de deal with. And then the next thing I would do is I would then work with, uh, I would ask her for a foot, and I would simply like touch the foot with two fingers. I mean, not even the foot, but a little bit on the leg. Can I just touch it with two fingers? So she can let go. You know, she, you, you're not holding it and you're not even cupping it. You're just kind of having her feel the touching of it and you can even lift it a little bit yourself so that she gets the idea that there's, she still has plenty of control. And by now when she really likes the behavior as it is, then adding this piece on is usually a lot easier because they love the behavior. So it's the small steps and taking the time to get it right that is really going to be fruitful. And then, then eventually go to cupping it and to holding the foot. And then I do, I move around till I can hold the foot and shake it and it'll go, you know, they're just totally relaxed with it. But obviously you have a ways to go before you can get there. So if she's due for a trim and this and it needs to be done and you're not ready for it i would i would talk to the vet and get a narcotic -y kind of drug some a drug that makes their mind not just their some of them like ace promazine isn't a great one i don't they call it different things in different countries i guess but it's not a great one because they can still it almost immobilizes them but their head is still very aware you want them something all kind of loopy and soft so if you have to do it and you're not ready to do it with her choice i would rather you take the the tension and frustration out of it by you talking to your vet and see if you can't find something that will help her to truly be relaxed and not not working against you know having to do treacherous things because clearly something already bad happened associated with it i would think anyway so that's where i'd go now the other piece i would work on before i got to the feet too much i even i would work on that tactile so that she trusts you touching her all over the place so i think this is really 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 important and when you can get to that place or you can touch her all over you've gone a ton you've gone so far towards building that cl classically conditioning you and building that trust so i definitely would work start at the place where she's the best that she is and and i don't care if she's you know you may say but well, she's good at the chest but that doesn't matter what i'd still do if i touch her chest i click and reinforce Touch the chest, click and reinforce. Touch more of the chest, click and reinforce. Touch the shoulder, click and reinforce. So what you're doing is you're really conditioning this so that touch in general is a good thing and leads to good things. So that she gets comfortable with it where you can kind of touch under arms and you can touch her a little, you know, or down her towards your stomach a little bit and then go back up to the back. But remember the belly and the teats are really tend to be tend to be the more worrisome places but so i'd start there i'd go to the back I, or, okay so now it sounds like you don't go behind the shoulder so what i would do is i would work on and this is i like the pool noodles because they can be it's something you can reach with but they are a little clumsy 
So if she's worried about dressage whip with your feet, use a pool noodle. Even though it's not quite as precise, it is. It doesn't have a history usually. They they might be a little worried, like what is that? But they don't they don't think, oh, I know what that is, and it's horrible. You know, it's that's if they have a history with a, a dressage whip, they they don't like it. You you need. I would go to the pool noodle. But the pool noodle is great for tactile, particularly because you can reach a little further and it doesn't matter if it's a little clumsier and but what I would do is I would go to her shoulder and reach as far as you can but keeping yourself in a safe place and get it where you click and reinforce for each little approximation past the shoulder take your time with this take weeks if you need to just take the time and build it up until she's quite comfortable with it and you may feel like you're hitting an impasse I'm working with um we have an untouchable and for a long time she was worried about human hands and the hands coming at her the hands touching her if it touched her she was okay like if you if she didn't notice it she didn't care the touch but at the hand coming at any part of her made her wince and it felt like for a while we're just in an impasse and what i would do i would say i'm gonna i would use a target to give her focus so using a target whether it's a stationary target or a handheld target is really good because it gives them focus and it tells them we're playing your favorite game so what i did with her is i'd have her do a target and then i'd just hold my hand up and i'd reinforce her and and actually in the beginning i, I did actually a step back i had her back further my hand was up she's back further i asked her to come forward and follow the target so she walked towards my hand, wasn't touching her, but she walked towards the hand till she got used to that a little bit, but still the hand approaching her. So her approaching the hand and got up. Okay. And then she got where she, I had to work on the hand coming towards her. Like I said, I could touch her. If I, if I, she didn't see the hand coming at her, she didn't mind the touch. That was not a problem. So I, I did feel like for a while I was having a hard time getting breaking past this point. So all I would do is I would ask her to target and I'd reinforce her. And then I would just, I would touch her once and, and that was good. And then I'd touch her. Usually the first one was more jumpy. The second one was more relaxed. I'd get the relaxed one and I'd feed her a ton. And it made a huge impact when I, uh, when I did it that way. It helped her to, thank you by the way. Um, so it really helped her, the magnitude reinforcement saying one little trial of this and it's over and I get all this food, I will do this. So I had to do that for a little bit till she's like, I love this. This isn't that hard. Now keep in mind, there's two reinforcers going on there. This, I mean, well, in, she likes the people. At this point, she liked the people. She didn't like the people's hands. But what happened, if I keep trying to do it over and over and over and do a lot of repetitions in one session, it's it's kind of building up with some anxiety because she's like, I don't like your hand. It is aversive. This hand is aversive. So, but but we had to break through this point somehow because she was never going to think it was okay without me kind of having to help her get a little bit, to stretch her just a little bit. So then I would reinforce it a lot till pretty soon she's like, okay, it's all right. So now we can pretty much touch her and she may raise her head just a little bit and then she goes, it's okay, we're just getting touched. And she's getting so much better. But you may hit impasses like that, but using very short session, don't keep doing the repetitions because it is aversive and hard. Keep it short and very sweet. I do the same with the feet. Until you can, and using the pool noodle if you need to, to go back there to reach further so she feels the sensation of the pool noodle on her rear end and her side and her flank and her hip so that you and even on her belly and then eventually to her teats back there so i think that it is that part is really really important if you can sort that out first i definitely would do that because as she trusts you she's going to be much better about her feet and trusting you even lifting and holding that foot at all but she needs to realize that the human touch is okay if she's still feeling quite defensive it, it makes it really challenging to get to a place that she has great worry about so the, the relationship is what you're really trying to build that she sees you and says good things happen when that person is here so and if and if you can it's hard sometimes when you have a horse who's aggressive look for those eyes to soften so if you're doing something you have kind of hard eyes 
the moment you feel her soften, relax, her lip is less tense, her eyes, reinforce those moments a lot because that's her choosing to let go of some of that. Uh, that's like the physical manifestation of her relaxing, you know, it is seeing the parts kind of be less tense. And so I'd really look for that. I'd build that up before you go to the feet, if you can possibly do that. Um, I would highly recommend it. So Kelly, I hope that gives you some food for thought. It gives you some things to think about. If you have more questions, don't hesitate to just jump back in and let me know. You or anybody else, you go to uh, www.on-target-training.com and that is uh, my website. And you can go to, there's an Ask Shauna tab. There's also a podcast tab which has a lot of uh even has foot handling in there and it, there and untouchables and then it has uh um blogs and it, well it has everything so you can go there and you can find out more if anybody has more questions obviously kelly you know how to get the questions in and then one more thing is if you want to learn more about what we're doing out here what i'm doing what we're up to what my schedule is I would like you to go to terranovatraining.com. That's T-E-R-R-A-N-O-V-A. -R -R and you can find out, you sign up for our newsletter. We'll keep you abreast of what we're doing and what we're how we're coming along and what we're doing with the horses and, and where we are in our outreach and getting out and about. Anyway, until next time, enjoy getting your horse on target. Bye, Kelly.